Hi, this is Les Binks from Les Binks Priesthood, and you're watching KRC. Okay, so hello everyone, Chaos Sign is today here at Hotel Vakuna in Helsinki, Finland, and we have Les Binks as guest. Hello man, how is it going? Uh, it's going great so far. <laughs> so far so good. You just arrived from the US, uh, am I right? I flew over from Los Angeles a few days ago, and so I'm still jet-lagged from that experience. And there's another two-hour difference between here and the UK, so it's about half nine in the morning in, in London, but um, I'm still trying to wake up, so I've got some coffee here. That'll help, I hope. <laughs> so you arrived here yesterday, am I right? Yes, I did, yeah. And you had like one rehearsal for the show tonight? Yeah, very, very brief one, yeah. So how did it go? Uh, it went fine, yeah. Uh, I mean, I've never worked with these guys before, you know, so it's, it's always a bit nervous when I walk in with a complete new band that I've never played with before. But we're, we're okay. We got we uh, went went through the stuff that we're going to play tonight, so hopefully it'll all go okay. So how does the set list like normally vary when you are heading to new countries to play? Do you normally play ar around the similar kind of set with every new band that you face? Well, the material or? we're doing is material that I'm familiar with, obviously. Yeah, you know, it's, it's material from my era with Judas Priest. Um, so I'm not having to learn stuff from scratch. You know, um, so as long as everybody knows the arrangements of the songs, that certainly helps. So you are first time in Finland. Very first time in Finland, yeah. So do you plan on exploring a little bit Helsinki? Unfortunately, I don't have very much time that I'm here. I'm only here for a couple of days. You know, I arrived yesterday. Most of the day was taken up. Well, you know, I got here in the afternoon, so most of the day was gone. <coughs> and uh, I fly back tomorrow. So. It's a so quite tight schedule. Yeah, very, very, yeah. So, as you said, you came to Finland from US, where you got inducted to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So, yeah, congratulations. No, I, I flew about back that. to London first. Ah, okay. And yeah, then, and then flew flew over here. <coughs> so, yeah. congratulations about Thank getting you. inducted. Yeah. Thank so you very much. Overall, what kind of experience it was for you? Um, well, it was a um, long time since I'd met the guys in the band, you know, since I left the band. And obviously, uh, KK left in 2011 as well. So uh, it was his first time playing with them again. And um, you may be aware that the atmosphere between the two hasn't been great over the last few years. Yeah. So a lot of people um, were surprised, to, you know, to see that actually happen, you know. Uh, not many people thought they'd ever see KK back with Judas Priest. Yeah. Let alone me, you know, especially of uh, two drummers. Yeah. Um, but you I mean Richie's Richie Faulkner? He's a he's an he's an old friend of mine anyway because we both worked together long before he joined Judas Priest. So it's good good to catch up with Richie again, and he and KK got on really well, you know, and, and especially on stage together. You know, uh, I got on great. I, I got on great with everybody in the band. I never had a problem with anyone in the band when I was when I was working with them. Uh, my, my my reason for leaving the band was purely down to the management they had then. You know, um, unfortunately, the management weren't very nice people. You know, and uh, they were ripping me off and ripping the band off. And it's a long story, but you know, if you can't, you get to a situation where you can't feel comfortable and confident in the people you're working with, especially on that level, there's no other choice but to walk away, you know. So, as I say, I, you know, my relationship with the band was never a problem, you know. So was it like still like warming and relaxing feeling to do those rehearsals yeah, and, and yeah, play was, that sort of medley was, that you did? It was quite an occasion, obviously. Um, we had a brief rehearsal the show went out. The show went out on uh, was on Saturday, the fifth of November, and we had a rehearsal on the Thursday. Okay. And so we had a break in between, and um, we had a very limited time slot. I think about eight minutes. I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And because um, originally, you know, we weren't actually supposed to be performing. You know, we were just there to accept the award, and that was it. 
Um, there are two categories that they put us in this performance category and um, what's it called? Uh, musical excellence category. Yeah, award, yeah. Well, they put us on the musical excellence category, which means you don't always have to perform. Okay. But something happened in between and they decided we should perform. So um, they gave us that limited spot of eight minutes. So we decided the best thing to do was to put a medley together of yeah. three songs. So we opened up with um, You Got Another Thing Coming and To Break In The Law and then Living After Midnight. So uh, those are the three songs we played. Was it like a weird feeling to be, have like everybody on stage together at uh, the same time? Yeah, but was, the thing is, it, it was all over in a flash. Yeah, you know? of course. Well, eight minutes uh, goes quite uh, fast. When you're up there, the time just goes, psh, you know, just goes really fast. Yeah. Um, and we all had a little acceptance speech to do. Um, and I had a, an email yesterday from... Uh, Jane Andrews, who's the band's manager, uh, telling me that the show goes out tonight on HBO, is the the network. Okay. And I think you can all, if you haven't, if you can't get HBO, um, there's a Rock and Roll Hall of Fame um, YouTube channel, which apparently you can you can view it on that, and it goes out tonight. But yeah, like you know, it's always with, with nowadays online media that so it's immediately out when you are doing something. So yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I watched it like um, next morning in Finland when yeah. it came out. Well, in the email, she explained to me that um, they've had to. Uh, they originally, the show was supposed to be. Um, I think three and a half, three, three, just over three hours for, for TV. Okay. Edited. Okay. But. They're, actually, they had over four and four and a half hours, of, and they decided to uh, extend it to an, I think a four-hour TV show. Okay. Yeah. So were you hanging like with the other guys of the band like before and after those rehearsals? Were you like sort of catching up and sharing stories, or or what kind of like that vibe was like? On and off stage, sort of. It was, you know, it's it's always very difficult when you're when you're. Um, the thing was that they were staying at a different hotel. Okay. For us as well, so we didn't get to spend a lot of time together. Um, mostly saw them uh, at the um, the venue, uh, the uh, Microsoft Theater, uh, when we had the rehearsal, and backstage there, you know, we we socialized more then. On the night of the the performance, uh, you can imagine it's hectic, you know. Yeah, it's and, very hectic normally. Uh, and the security there is amazing, you know. Um, I mean, it's like going through an airport security system, and they also have sniffer dogs. Okay. You know, so it's really very yeah, very tight on security. Um, Alice Cooper uh, inducted the band, made a little speech. They showed a. Uh, a five-minute video of the band's career, you know, from early days up to today, and then and then we and then we were um, and we did the performance and accepted the awards and made a little speech. Uh, and apparently, the speeches are all being edited down to about that, that much, you know. Um, but I kept mine very short and sweet anyway, because I knew it would be edited, you know. So I just went straight to the point. So there shouldn't be too much editing in mine, on mine. Not sure about um, Rob and um, and Len. They they spoke the longest. You know. Okay. So theirs will be have to be edited down quite a bit. So you went to the U.S. with KK. Yeah, we flew over on the same flight. Yeah. So and obviously you had KK's priest like some kind of like thing going on and then you heard was it like your wrist or something and then you were sort of like dropped out from that but now KK said like few days ago that there's the second KK's Priest album which is in the mixing phase now so have you been involved in any, any way with that? Um, no I haven't um, reason being um, I mean I I caught up with KK back in 2017 yeah you know And at that time, I suggested to him that we should do something together, you know, some, the, the two of us. But um, I think he was so preoccupied 
so with um, the new album is already other things. That, I mean, he had his golf course thing and, uh, that, that he was, and he was planning to build a hotel there and as well. Okay. And uh, so he had, that's where his energy and his uh, efforts were, you know, were focused on. Yeah, yeah. And so I think at that point, the idea of starting a new band and starting from scratch, starting all over again, you know, didn't quite appeal to him. Um, but then I got a call from him in 2019 and he said, um, um, David Ellison from, from uh, Megadeth, who's a friend of his, because they used to tour together, is coming over, he's got a book out that he's promoting and he's put a little band together just for the European trip. And, uh, he wants to do a show at um, KK Steel Mill in Wolverhampton, which is a venue that he's involved in. And he said, um, "We thought it might be a good idea if we just put a show together. Would you be? Would you come up and play?" And I said, "Yeah." And he said, "We've got Ripper involved as well, Tim Ripper Owens." So uh, there was um, three former members of Judas Priest, you know. Uh, a AJ Mills on guitar as well. Um, so uh, we, I, I, I went up to um, um, uh, that neck of the woods where, where KK lives in Shropshire. And we had a rehearsal for a few days. But the, the, the guys from uh, America, that's Tim and, Tim and uh, David, they only arrived more or less on the day okay and, uh, so we didn't have much rehearsal with them you know but um, we did the, we did the show and everything went went, went great and I think that gave KK the um, the desire to go back and play to live audiences again you know because that's what he it's in his blood really yeah you know? yeah I, can, I get it in yeah. everybody's and I, I said to him you know I said like you know uh, musicians should always stay to what they know best yeah. in life you know once you start getting involved in other um, areas in life business wise it's risky yeah you know um, so if you stay if you stay at what we're good at and what you know I would always recommend that that direction for people so so after that show went down great and the reaction to it was was good so then he approached me again and asked me if I would um, like to make it a more a more permanent band obviously with David he was already committed at the time to Megadeth so he couldn't be involved uh, so we've um, got another bass player in, um, Tony Newton, who I knew from years before. Uh, he's a good guy. And um, first of all, um, KK wanted to get management sorted out. So he sorted out a deal with a, a management company in, in America, in, in Los Angeles actually. And uh, they wanted us to do um, an album first before going on tour. So everything was set up to go into the studio. And um, that time, you know, I had a wrist injury at the time, so I couldn't do it. And I knew that they wanted to get on tour as quickly as possible. So at my suggestion, I said, just bring in another drummer and get the album done, you know. And if I'm okay for touring, we can maybe sort it out later on. But of course, that also coincided with the beginning of the pandemic. Yeah. And everything closed, you know, all the major venues. In London, all the West End theatre shows were shut down. The pubs were closed. Uh, Hammersmith Apollo uh, the O2 in London they were all shut down no live concerts at all and that was the case you know the lockdown periods that we had uh, so it was a lot of uncertainty and um, that really sort of uh, meant that everything was just put on hold until these places could reopen and touring could begin again but even now you know uh, you know, I'll give you an example. 
the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame performance, we all had to have COVID tests. You know, everybody that was backstage, all the crew, you know, um, so there's still a lot of... Um, Some places are very strict with, yeah, there's with a lot of restrictions. Like COVID policies. Yeah. So it's, you, couldn't, you can't really say everything's back to normal, but the thing is that COVID is here to stay. Yeah. Um, we all have to learn how to live yeah, with it, you know. It, yeah. Every, a lot of people are vaccinated now, but it doesn't mean they can't get it. Yeah. You know, so... So I, I mean, I have my own band, and I have various other other commitments as well, and so and and uh, also um, uh, Tim, uh, he's constantly working, you know, with one situation or another. He's been over in Australia recently with um, uh, one of the uh, Simon Wright. He was one of the drummers that was with uh, ACDC. Yeah, uh, they got together and did a short. Uh, tour in uh, Australia um, so Tim's always working in some shape or form and um, you know it's like even with my band um, the the musicians I have are all great musicians and if you've got great musicians they're always going to be in demand elsewhere as well you know and so when I when I'm offered uh, a show to do, I have to contact everybody in the band and make sure they're all available before I can commit to it. Yeah, you know. Um, so everybody's doing lots of different things, and um, KK wanted to because I think the management that he chose he's changed since then. You know, okay. I don't think he got on too well with the uh, the management company that he initially signed up with so he's got new management again and all of that's taking time to sort things out before you can get back on the road so there's been a lot of things that have caused delays in the band touring uh, he's asked me if I would do like a guest spot uh, and that's still sort of an offer that yeah, it's yeah. open so, for you yeah that's open for me and I said yeah if, it's, if we can work something out well, that would be good you know um, so we are still in touch. We, you know, we travelled together over to uh, the USA for this um, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame thing, and um, travelled back together. So we're in constant contact, and uh, I just have to wait and see how things develop. Uh, and if there's something I can do and get involved in, uh, I'd be happy to do it. Yeah, and I guess some sometime next year he will probably do some touring. Well, I would it's, hope it's so. It's like yeah. long overdue already. Yeah, yeah, cause everybody's going, when are you going to tour? When are you going to tour? You know? Yeah, and now if he has the second album in the mixing phase, it's probably going to be out sometime next year. So yeah. I guess with two albums, he wants to go out. Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah. So how does the future overall at the moment look for you when it comes to next year? Do you have like any sort of like plans already locked yes, up I for do. next yeah, year? Yes, I do. Yeah, I've got lots of plans. <laughs> uh, there's a, there's a, uh, some shows coming up in the new year. Um, and, um, With less being spreased toward or uh, yeah, and um, there's a thing I did a few years ago. Uh, Carl Palmer was on the same bill. Um, it's called uh, Legends of Rock, and that's in uh, it's a three or four day little festival thing that happens in um, a Great Yarmouth, okay, in Norfolk. And that's in uh, early part of March. So we did that a few years ago, and we're back again this year. And we've got a cruise thing happening as well later on in the year. Okay. Uh, all bits and pieces. Uh, so uh, there's a lot to look forward to next year. Okay. Well, we are looking forward when you are revealing more news for the next year. Okay. Hey, thanks a lot, Les, for the chat and, and all the best for tonight's show as well as for the future. Anything you want to say as a closer to all the fans who will be watching uh, this afternoon? Well, I hope to see a lot of them tonight at this event, you know. This is a, this is the first opportunity I've had to come and perform in uh, Finland. And um, so it's the first opportunity I've had to meet some of the fans here. Um, so, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.